Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to our first episode and potentially our only episode of Let's Talk Tuesday. Uh, the goal of this weekly talk is to help you and I dig into the things that are happening around us through the lens of Jesus Christ. This includes culture, family, friends, and much more. Today, my hope is to get some answers about an app that I'm sure you've heard about called TikTok. TikTok derives from Musical.ly. It's really just a rip off of Vine, but it's become the social media platform that people are flocking to. In fact, it lives off of 60 second videos where people are doing dances or lip syncing, and it has over 1.2 billion downloads, 500 million platform users. And 41% of these users are between the age of 16 and 24. Now, while the older generation like me is starting to get on this app, the majority of this app remains younger. And even more important than that, the average user spends about 52 minutes per day on this app. That's almost an hour of an entire day of someone's life. And there's a variety of content on TikTok, which is more than just the funny videos and the dancing and the rant and the lip sync things, there's this growing amount of Christian content, uh, content that ranges from somewhere sharing about an encouraging word or a scripture to a creative Christ-centered rewrite of a popular song. So here's what I've got. I've got today with me a couple guys that have been really digging into the world of TikTok with the lens of advancing the gospel through that. And so as I uh, introduce these guys, I would love for each of you uh, just to share with me something uh, silly or random about your life that people should know about you. All right, so my first uh, guest today is Chris Miller. Chris is a college freshman at this point. Uh, Chris, would you let us know something about your life? Uh, hey guys, my name is Chris and I love to eat. Yes, he does. He is an eating machine. Uh, in fact, I believe that if you put anything on the grill, Chris will devour it to uh, the point where there is nothing left. All right. Uh, my next guest today is Logan Owens. Hey, everybody. I'm Logan. And a uh, fun fact about me is for my prom this year, I wore a matching tulip suit that had matching pants, jacket, and tie. Man, I respect that deeply. I deeply respect that. I got to see that tulip suit on a Zoom call that we were in last night, and it really popped. Um, the matching tie really brings the whole ensemble together, I must say. Um, the afro almost makes you look like you are yourself a sprouting plant, a, a tulip in the shadows, truly. All right, uh, and my last guest today is Jake. Hey guys, I'm Jake, and one fun fact about me is that I'm a phenomenal baseball player. Yeah, he uh, definitely believes he's a phenomenal baseball player. Uh, I don't know how much of that is actually true. I've never seen him play baseball, but the word on the street is that he does decently okay at it. All right, guys, well, thanks for sharing with me. Um, so I have to be honest with you. Uh, I have been very open about my hesitation with TikTok over the past year. Um, in fact, many of you guys have talked to me about TikTok and said some of the things that you're doing on there and some of the things that you're seeing. And I've always kind of been a guy where I kind of pump the brakes a little bit on that, especially when it comes to some of the uh, vulgar content or some of the inappropriate content that's popped up on there. Um, although through my observations over the last few months, I've been watching the three of you take this place of social media and begin to use it as a mission field, not just on like an every once in a while basis, but on a daily basis you've been doing that. And in fact, in the last 24 hours, each of you have made a TikTok that combined has reached hundreds of people, hundreds of people in the last 24 hours. Jake, you had one video a few weeks ago that you literally didn't say a word in the TikTok and it reached over 5,000 people. And in fact, hundreds of people commented on it. Some of them were in great support of what you were doing. Some of them really wanted to challenge the words that you weren't even saying, but rather the things that you were pointing out about scripture through your little comments that were around the outside of your lens. And so now, just as I share that, I want to make sure that people understand that I don't base quality 
upon the amount of likes or views a video gets. Uh, because I know that there are some trash videos out there, some garbage content that a lot of people watch. But as I watch you guys, I've seen really good quality, thought out, really thought provoking content that is focused on Christ. And so what I want to do is I want to just dig for my own interest today and hopefully for the interest of our listeners about how you're doing it, why you're doing it, and really what the purpose is in the long term of that. So with that said, I'd like to ask you guys a few questions. So um, if, again, if you want to jump in here, you can just let me know and I can shoot this over to you and make sure that everyone can hear what you're saying. So the first thing is, why do you personally use TikTok? I'll come over here to uh, Jake. Um, well, I usually use TikTok to uh, help encourage people and uh, just spread the gospel message. It's it's a fun way to do that because you don't have to think about it a long time. You you can have your thought process written out on a piece of paper, and then you can go deep into a 60-second video, which isn't that deep, but it's deep enough to uh, get some thoughts moving in, some brains moving in that way, so people get to thinking about the gospel and how it spreads. Awesome, awesome. Um, uh, Chris, just to touch on you real quick, what... Uh, what is the reason why you use TikTok? I use it pretty much the same reason as Jake. I just want to spread the gospel to people. And it's a really good practice since I want to go to ministry school. It's a good way for me to get a little practice in talking and uh, using the gospel to encourage people and teach them. That is phenomenal. I love that you're tying in your uh, future uh, ministry school into this personal evangelism, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit um, through TikTok, which, which is just incredible. Uh, Logan, my next question is for you. Uh, I would like to know how TikTok has helped you with your personal evangelism. Uh, Jake and Chris both kind of touched on that, but I'd like to know for you personally, how has TikTok helped you in your personal evangelism? Well, the more you practice, sharing the gospel with other people, the easier it gets. So when I make videos that talk about different topics in the Bible, that's, that makes it easier for me to then go and share that with somebody else of, Hey, this is what I was talking about. And I've talked about this before. So it's, it gets easier and easier to talk about the more you practice. So I think that personally that it's helped me a lot to, uh, to make these videos in order to be able to go and be like, Hey, uh, or even go back and look at what I said to be able to say it to somebody else helped me grow that way. Hmm. So you would say then that the personal evangelism side of your TikTok making has really sharpened you to be able to look at content and to figure out a way to share that with other people. And, and then it even backs up. You said, even in your personal life with some of your friends that you know from school or you know from sporting events that you're able to then say, hey, this is something that I've talked about before and you're able to share that. I think that that's amazing. Um, and, and the fact that you have to do that in 15 to 60 seconds kind of blows my mind, right? So as a pastor, you know, I get the opportunity to preach for 25 minutes at least sometimes. Um, sometimes I get a whole hour at camp retreats to be able to talk about a topic. And so just this idea of being able to boil down a topic like I've seen you guys talk about, you know, why the Bible is true or um, what's the importance of Jesus's resurrection from the dead or what is baptism? It, literally, there's six week baptism classes that people take on the understanding of what baptiz baptism is. So the idea that you're able to do that in 15 to 60 seconds, um, I'd love to know what are some of the things that you have to do to prepare for that? Uh, again, if I'm going to preach a sermon, I'm putting in eight hours a week at least to write that, to study that, to do those things. And so what are some of your preparation practices, Jake, that you have to do to be able to put something like that of that type of quality and content together? Really, it's it's really about what I'm reading at the moment, and then once I once I study something, and then I can put that into practice, and then apply that, and then share that with other people. 
I really, I really don't want to teach anybody anything that I haven't applied to my own life and taught to other people individually. So I don't want to put something out there that isn't, isn't true or I don't know about. So I have to, I have to study it first and then go on and then share it that way. Yeah. So you're saying that the overflow of what you do on TikTok is a byproduct of what you're doing in your everyday life. Um, and I think that that's a great example of the way that we're all called to live as Christians is that what we're doing in our private devotion should overflow into our public ministry. Um, and, you know, Chris, I'd love to hear, are you a guy that writes out what you're going to say in advance, or do you just kind of stand in front of the phone knowing what you want to say and, and just do it? So to make all my TikToks, uh, I kind of start off with the basis of like, I ask like a friend or family member, like their favorite piece of scripture. That's what I've been doing lately anyway. And I just go and get my Bible and take notes on that scripture. I'm not able to just uh, start my camera up and talk about that. I read this piece of scripture four or five times, take uh, like a half page of notes on it. And then I'm able to, sometimes it takes like five or six takes to even get one cut down and that's all right. Yeah, so it takes some time um, to put some things together. But again, you're using your influences of the people around you and really kind of taking a spiritual hardship, which is no different, again, than what I do as, as, a, as a pastor. Um, I'm looking around to the congregation. I'm, I'm asking questions. I'm watching where God is working. And I'm using that as fuel to be able to address specific topics and things that are going on. I mean, that's what we do every time that we plan a sermon series. And so the idea that that's flowing into this world of social media and TikTok it's pretty incredible. Uh, okay, so um, in the same way that I speak about the incredibleness of TikTok, obviously there's a lot of content on TikTok that is not Christian proclaiming the gospel, um, good news for the world aspects in there. And that includes some pretty foul language. There's um, a lot of uh, skin showing sometimes in dance videos, sometimes even inappropriate uh, type of music that's playing. And again, I, I'm not saying that TikTok should be to this standard of Christianity for the world, because I understand that it is of the world and it's not necessarily to say that it has to meet our standards for that. But what are some ways that you guys are guarding your heart and mind in the realm of the TikTok world? Or what are some ways that you can practically put in some safeguards as to not fall tempted into watching things that are inappropriate or getting yourself caught up into things that you shouldn't be caught up into in the first place. Uh, I'll take any of you guys to answer that one. Logan. So uh, in TikTok, you just swipe up to change videos. And so the way I kind of do it is if I see something that I glimpse something that's not something that I should be watching or I hear something that's not the best, just it's a real quick swipe of it's gone. It, it You just go past it. But also they, they have a, a feature where uh, you can click on a video and if it's something that's is a dance or something or even something that's in a, using an inappropriate sound on there then you can hit not interested and they the app will then redirect the, its algorithm or whatever on what videos it shows on your for you page and then stuff like that will not uh, show up anymore because it works the same way around because if I like a whole bunch of Christian content, then more and more Christian content is going to show up on my for you page. And that's going to be more and more what I see. So if people are intentionally wanting to see Christian content and not the other stuff, then they should go and find search like hashtag Jesus or hashtag Christian, because then mostly that stuff will show up on your uh, for you page. That is great um, information, Logan. In fact, sometimes I wish I had that just in my daily life, um, that when I walk past something that's inappropriate, I wish I could just swipe up and it would just disappear, uh, or I could uh, only see those things. But, but again, I want to go back to um, this idea that um, you know, TikTok is not created um, for just necessarily a Christian to share videos on. Really, it's, it's a great glimpse into kind of this world, but also a fabricated world in saying that there are things that happen on TikTok or people that live on TikTok um, that really don't display the trueness of who they are, um, especially the, the copycat mentality of 
uh, watching a video and just doing that video because that person that you like to follow does that video, even if you don't agree with the words or even if the dancing is a little bit inappropriate. Um, so what are some ways that you guys would encourage other students to make TikTok a, a place that isn't necessarily a hindrance to their spiritual walk or a hindrance to the reality of what God's doing? And it becomes more of a place where they are able to be mission minded. So I guess my simple question is, is how can TikTok really be a mission field for us rather than just a place uh, of temptation? I'll come over to um, you, Jake. Well, the way I use it, um, it's, it's always a mission field because, uh, I'm constantly evangelizing the people that have questions, but for other people, it's, it's hard not to put a mask on and to follow the crowd and to try and gain popularity through that way. Cause it's very easy to be able to do that, to be able to put on a mask and then follow somebody else and then gain followers from doing that. But it, but the way that Christ wants us to use this app is to constantly remind ourselves that he is the reason why we're on here. And that he is the reason why we're spreading the gospel on this platform. So we just have to keep that constant reminder in our head that we don't need to put on a mask. We can be upfront with people and show them our true identity in Christ and not with the platform of the followers or the popularity. We can, we can spread the gospel in that way. So just to ask this question, Jake, um, how do you combat, you know, you, you had a video recently and that's not to discredit any of these other two guys that are doing things, but you had a video that, that reached over 5,000 people. Um, and, and like I said earlier in, in our time, almost 800 people um, were commenting on that and, and talking about that. So how do you go from, from that? Um, and then, you know, maybe your next video only gets, you know, 50 likes or, or 50 views. Um, do you ever feel like you're doing something wrong necessarily, or do you find that to be almost like a thing that you really have to guard your heart against? You know, when I make the comparison, I think about like um, preaching, right? Um, sometimes when a preacher gets done preaching, they're looking for that person that's going to say, hey, great message today, man, that really struck me. Or hey, they're waiting for that text message that they get from somebody just to give them that validation that what they're saying was good and truthful and made an impact. Do you find that that uh, also happens in this TikTok world? And how do you guard your heart against that? Yeah, I have had a couple of videos that kind of blew up on, on the platform, but it's, it's really not a matter that I feel like whatever, whoever needs to see it will see it. That's how Christ is going to work in this. It's not, it's not a matter of how many people see it, but how many people are impacted by the videos I make. It's, it's not, it's not about, not about the views, but it's about the people that are encouraged and will go out and apply that to their life. That's what, that's what I care about most. So that's why I keep that same mentality that I'll keep on putting out the same type of videos because Christ will lead people to those videos if, if need be. So it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of fellowship or uh, how many followers I get from this thing. It's, it's about how many people are impacted. Good word, sir. Good word. Um, Chris, do you have anything to add to that or um, anything that you've found in that world of trying to maybe please man rather than please God in the TikTok uh, realm of things that you've had to kind of guard your heart against? So it's like you said, TikTok is like an app of the world. It's, it's, that's what people see on there is more uh, like less content that's Christian. And then people that do see our content that us, that us three are making, they see that we are like a, how do I say, uh, good mentors, I guess. And they're, maybe they'll start following us. Like I've gotten more followers. I just started TikTok like two weeks ago and I've already tripled in followers. And the more people that follow you, the more people that see your videos and just keeping a, a good mentality and doing what you can to spread your videos to the people of the world is, what we're doing. Absolutely. Um, so Logan, I'm going to come down to you here for a second. Um, you and I have, have known each other for a long time. Uh, in fact, longer than any of these other two guys uh, that are here with me today. Uh, but I, I want to be able to just ask you plainly 
if I was going to use TikTok to share the gospel, let's say I fired up TikTok today and I wanted to make Christian content, which I think two weeks ago or a month ago, I, I created an actual account now that I can see um, some of the things that are going on. I can follow you guys on there. I also follow Stephen Furtick. Um, I don't know how to find anybody else, but Stephen Furtick is one guy I follow on there and I watch his crazy yelling videos and it's awesome. He's passionate and elevation worship music's with it. But if I was to make uh, a TikTok today about sharing the gospel, um, what would you say kind of my process that I needed to do? What would you say the most important things are as I prepare to make a TikTok that includes the gospel? Uh, the, most, the first thing you do is you find a good scripture that really touches your heart. And <clears throat> then, like we talked about before, you got to be able to back that up. It depends on what you talk about, because sometimes you can make a video where you're just explaining a scripture. But if you make a video, and I know that Jake's made some, and I made some, where they're very powerful messages, you got to be able to back that up, because there will be tons of people that just, like we you talked about comments, um, we comment on each other's and give us each other encouragement, and there are people all around the world that do that, but there are also people who are ready and willing to say some very dumb things in order to counteract what we say. So you have to be able to back up what you're talking about. Like Jake said, do some research about it. Cause it, for me, it doesn't really take me that long to make the video and to explain what I'm talking about, but it's more effort and work to be, be ready to combat the world when they come and negatively comment on what you're trying to say or to argue with you or to just say really dumb things. You know, there's really not much of a difference there um, in the way that we do street evangelism though. Um, and the only difference is, is that there's more time to sit behind your phone and to write something out or, or to do those things, you know, with street evangelism, it's a lot faster. Um, and even in the way that we build, you know, credibility through what we're saying. It, it does take some time to be able to do that. Um, but uh, there's something else that I've noticed that I don't even know where to begin on this, and I don't know if you guys can, can give me any advice on this. Um, you, it looks like there's a lot of um, functions in TikTok that you can put like little words that pop up, and there's, there's music that plays in the background a lot of times. Um, Jake, would you mind just to speak a little bit to that? And and how long does it take in that editing process once you've created this video or, or done that stylistically stuff? Uh, how long does it take you to kind of get to the final product? Honestly, after you shoot the video, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. If it takes more than 10 minutes, I think you're, you might be overdoing it with the whole editing process thing. Um, but sometimes I'll put sound on it. There's a There's a thing for sound. You can put worship music on it. There's also a, a text edit, so you can type in whatever you want, and then you can set a duration on it. You can set it to different fonts and different colors, and then you can put that in, and match the words you're saying within the within the video that you're that you're shooting. Well, that's really neat. Um, I, I will certainly have to check some of those pieces out um, and to see uh, what different fonts and things kind of go with that. But again, I. I go back to that video that you had, you literally didn't say a word in it. You just had these text boxes that came up and it was just addressing why people have such a hard time believing in Jesus. Um, and the reality being that it's because they kind of get in their own way um, and it contradicts what maybe their thoughts of life are. Um, and really Jesus has come really to challenge our way of thinking and our sinful heart and to trust him. And so that created a lot of momentum and people really gravitated towards that. And it was just cool to see a video like that, that literally had no words um, spoken, but very powerful impact. Okay, so as we kind of round out our time here together, I'd love to hear from you guys, if you have any um, practical stories about how sharing the gospel on TikTok has made a personal impact on someone for the life of Christ. And again, I know that TikTok is not necessary, it's not discipleship, right? It, this is not a place where you're in accountable 
relationships in the scripture together on a daily, weekly basis. It's not that. You're not reproducing out of that disciples that are going to make more disciples. But it is certainly a place of evangelism where people are hearing the word, maybe even for the first time, or maybe applying it to the first time. So have you guys seen, um, even in your own friend groups that follow you on TikTok, or those that you have no idea even who they are, that this has made a personal impact for them for the glory of Jesus Christ and his kingdom? Coming over to you, Jay. <clears throat> well, uh, out of the blue, uh, it was a couple couple weeks ago, but after I made a, a video on my page, I had someone slide up. Well, I had my Instagram linked to my TikTok, but I had someone slide in my DMs and they were like, uh, that message was really powerful that you put on your TikTok. Uh, how, how, do I, how do I get to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And so I walked them through the steps. I walked them through how I have a relationship and what it means and what following Christ is. And, and he took that to heart. I, he really took that to heart. He said he was in Ohio for the month, um, but the, the quarantine happened and his real home is down in Florida. And once he gets back home in Florida, he thinks he's really going to get baptized. And, uh, and so just because I put out a video, someone was impacted by that. And, and they, had, they had an encounter with Christ in that way. And that's, and that's really powerful to see that something that I did had an impact on someone that lives in Florida. And now they want to get baptized. Maybe not just solely because of that video, but because Christ was putting that on their heart. Man, that is incredible. Um, and it just goes again to show that God's glory, um, God's power is not reserved for any specific um, moment or any specific experience. In fact, it's constantly at work. You know, God is not one that sleeps. He's not um, closed his eyes to the world of social media, but in fact, he's very active in that world. And I think that we're seeing that in huge ways right now. I mean, even as a church, we're streaming and broadcasting our sermons every week on Facebook, YouTube, and also through the website. And, and that's made some pretty incredible connections with people that normally maybe wouldn't step a foot into a, a gathering um, or maybe wouldn't even do a face-to-face -face conversation, but they're willing to kind of watch behind the lens. And what's so cool is that God's Spirit is still at work in that. It's not limited in any way, shape, or form. And so I think that that's really powerful that we're able to see that and we're able to watch God working through that. Um, Chris, Logan, do you guys have any other stories or experiences that you've had um, where you've seen personal impact for the glory of the kingdom of God through the use of TikTok gospel, I guess is what I'm going to call it at this point. Um, anything that you guys can share about? Okay, coming over to you, Chris. So just like just like Jake, I've had people like message me. I have my Snapchat on my uh, like bio on TikTok, and I've had people Snapchat me and just ask questions. And I feel great being able to answer their questions. And if I can't answer them, I ask somebody who would know, like Graham or you, and I'm able to, like Jake said, make an impact in their life, and that feels so great. Yeah. So to, to finish that out, then I, I would love to just recap on what we've talked about today. So again, we've addressed the fact that TikTok is a growing um, app and it has been. In fact, I think that it might be almost reaching its peak at this point. I, I think that almost every two years, there's always something new. And so there'll be another platform. There'll be another thing that comes out that's like TikTok, but it's called something different or it operates a little bit differently. Um, and in the same way that Instagram and Facebook had their time, I think that TikTok will have its time. But right now, it's very popular. Um, and it's, it's kind of on the forefront of a lot of people's minds, uh, and especially in students, again, with 46% of the users on TikTok being between the age of 16 and 24. Um, that's really that sweet spot of decision making in what people are doing with their life and trusting in Jesus Christ from an adult perspective. Um, that's a really powerful season that's going on. And so what you guys have been doing is using that platform as an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm taking the time to um, prepare a message each day, sometimes multiple uh, times a week. 
and you've been able to see great response through those things. But we've also talked about today that we can't weight the value of a message based upon how many likes or shares or comments it gets, because then we begin to get in a very dangerous realm where we begin to start to perform for man rather than to please God. And just like we each shared, it's about the one person that discovers Jesus Christ, even through the medium of TikTok, that we're able to proclaim that good news. And so for anybody that's tuning in and listening to this talk today, um, you know, our encouragement and, and the reality that we're hearing right now is that TikTok is a place in which you can have great enjoyment and do fun dances and um, do funny lip sync and have all the editing stuff that goes with that. It, it's fun and it's great, um, but it also has some dangers that are hidden within it, which is, includes some inappropriate um, videos, some inappropriate music, but that's the reality of being a part of where the world is. And that doesn't mean that we need to entertain that. We can set parameters to make sure that we're not viewing those things. Or you know, just like Logan said, we can swipe up real quickly. And I think that's a great uh, metaphor for life in general. When sin creeps at the door, when it's right there at our screen, man, let's just swipe up on that business and move on to the next thing. Um, but the truth that you guys are proclaiming on there is not something to swipe up on. Rather, it's something to really engage and to be a part of. Um, and I think that what you're doing is really powerful. And in the same way, I think that the way that it is training your hearts for more personal evangelism is really, really powerful. Um, and so I'm very grateful that you're taking the time to ask the questions, that you're responding to the comments that are on there, that you're seeking good wisdom, and that it's challenging you to really look at who is Jesus? What are the promises of the Bible? And then being able to have to go back and answer those things and to have that accountability continue to grow. I think that it's a great tool. I think it's a personal evangelism tool that can be very useful for those that can handle that and that are at the correct age, right? Like I'm not saying that TikTok should be really used by our students that are in uh, older elementary or even younger middle school, um, because I think there's a lot of temptation that can take place of just following the leader and the crowd. But you've really got to be able to say that this is the reason why I'm using it as a way that I can influence um, and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And also, you know, sometimes I get to make a funny little video about uh, me doing a silly dance. That's cool. Uh, and I think that that's, those are great things. Um, but again, I think that what you guys are doing is powerful. And I'm thankful that we got to share a little bit today about the ways in which you're doing that and the power of what you're doing in those things. So uh, before we wrap up our first and probably only episode of Let's Talk Tuesday, uh, do you guys have anything else that you want to add in or to share before we finish up? Good. I'm glad that you got it all out. Thanks for being so willing to be a part of this. Well, I would love to pray for us and for those that are tuning in right now. Um, and just thank God for what he's doing in all of these things. Father, we praise you for the power of your spirit and for what it continues to do in our world that surrounds us. God, in this time of social quarantine and being limited in um, our physical interaction with each other, God, you're using platforms like TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Um, and God, even just the websites that are out there today to proclaim the good news um, that your son Jesus has come into this world. And God, we're grateful that you continue to be so active in that. Lord, for the seeds that are being planted through these videos and through the message that's being proclaimed in that, I pray, Lord, that you would water it. God, that you would cause it to grow. God, that there would be fruit that is produced out of what your spirit is doing in the lives of people. God, I pray that you would guard and protect the hearts of each of these men that are trusting you to lead them in this world of social media to proclaim that good news. And God, we pray for revival in that. God, if that's where you want your revival to begin is through the message of Jesus Christ being proclaimed on social media. God, we praise you for that because we know the influence that it has in people's lives. But God, may that not be the end road for us. God, may we desire to be physically with one another. God, may we deeply be burdened for discipleship of believers, not just making converts for Christ, but truly making believers who make disciples who make disciples, God. We live to build your kingdom, God, and we're thankful that your spirit continues to live inside of us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>